From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, June 19th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.95 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,282 per ounce. And a the Relationship Pro talks to your girlfriend so you don't have to. We're joined today in our demo center by Eric and Pam, a couple that's been teetering on the edge of divorce for years. So, Pam, you guys have been using the controller all morning. I understand it's a very good listener. It's like talking to a fully developed person. It's got to be a major relief not needing your husband to be your partner or a friend. Oh, yeah. So, Eric, it must be a, a tremendous relief to know that there's someone else on the other end of Pam's eye rolls. Oh, now I can focus on my game instead of worrying about all that stuff she said there. Will the relationship pro keep you two together? I think it'll drag this thing out for another couple months. Amazing. Now, to thank you two for coming on the show, we bought you two the new Deluxe Relationship Pro Extreme. This expanded model has two new modes. Fantasy mode, which allows you to select the age and nationality of the controller's voice. Oh, I choose a voice like my dad's. OK. And a hyper-realistic mode that starts fights and then grovels pathetically when it's afraid you might get rid of it. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You may notice that this does not sound like Ian. That's because it's not. In studio tonight, it's Daryl. And Derek J. Ian and Mark are on the road. They're heading down to New York City. New York City! Yes, New York City. <laughs> They're going to the Talkers Convention that happens, I think, twice a year. That's right. And once on the East Coast, once on the West Coast, this one is New York City. And it's just before Porkfest as well. So, you know, they, they've got sort of two little vacations in one, although they're both working trips. So I don't really know if you could consider either to be a vacation. Free Talk Live will be very busy during both events, to be sure. Yes. Yes, they will. And... You know, you can go to freetalklive.com. You can actually put in show prep on the website, and a lot of people do. There's front page stories. Sometimes we will use those stories as show prep. Sometimes we do not. I have brought in a couple of stories. Derek, you've brought in a couple of things. But first, we are actually going straight to the phones because that's what we do here. All right. It's about you and your calls. Dennis Goddard calling in, wants to talk about Ian's gubernatorial run. Dennis, you're on Free Talk Live. So, hey, folks. So, this is amazing. It's always interesting to me. Ian, Ian is semi-famous for really not being down with the whole political process and, uh, and stuff. But I got wind from a New Hampshire insider that Mr. Freeman is Formally, he has formally put in the paperwork. He's paid the hundred bucks that it takes to do so, and he is running for governor on yes. the Democratic ticket. He Woo! actually he filed for governor before Maggie Hassan ran or filed the paper to run for re-election. So technically, she filed to run against Ian instead of Ian filing to run against her. Maggie Hassan, of course, being the uh, person who is currently the governor of our state and the person who is largely responsible for us not have, who is single-handedly responsible for us not having legal recreational marijuana. She is the queen of reefer madness, and it was very difficult to get even medical past her, but we eventually, of course, did. But um, she, yes, she's missed, an and, and it's so, you know, why elect Democrats if you're not even going to get legal pot? Why? Yeah, and it's really interesting because, you know, a lot of people thought that Maggie Hassan would wind up, you know, quote unquote, giving us uh, medical cannabis or at least uh, decriminalized. And she threatened to veto the original medical bill because it allowed for home grow. It, it allowed patients who qualified if they lived you know, I, I believe it was more than 30 miles away from one of the four what they call alternative treatment centers. If you lived further than 30 miles away, you would be allowed to grow a very small amount of cannabis. She threatened to veto the bill because that was in there. So, of course, it got removed and then she signed it. And then, you know, some of the politicians 
tried putting a bill through to actually allow for home grow, and that was rejected primarily because, well, the governor's going to veto it, and we don't have enough people to override the veto, so why should we even pass this? Yeah, but hey, you know, we... Well, there's lots of good reasons to pass it. We now have medical marijuana in this state. That is something in a state that, no, you know, six or seven years ago, people have said it's never going to happen in this state. But then the free staters came and pretty much took over the Republican Party. Uh, I mean, it's it's crazy. I don't know if you've ever been to a Republican Party function in New Hampshire, but it's hard to tell that it's not a free stater function in New Hampshire because so many of the people there are free staters. And Dennis, I, I just want to sort of correct one thing that you said. While technically you're right, New Hampshire does have medical marijuana or therapeutic cannabis, as it is known in the statutes. It's sort of legal on paper only because... None of the alternative treatment centers are open yet, which means that none of the patients who would qualify can actually get the cannabis that they need yet. And during one of the committee hearings, I believe Matt Simon from the Marijuana Policy Project said that based on the current time scale of when things are going to wind up getting handed out of which four companies are going to wind up having the alternative treatment centers. It's going to be 2017 at the soonest before any of them are up and running. Wow. Yeah, that, that sucks. But again, I, I take victories as good things, not as bad things. You know, there are plenty of states that don't have medical marijuana at all. And the way these things work, as I've observed in, uh, nearly a decade of watching these things happen. They happen little steps at a time. It goes, first you get more votes in the House. Suddenly you start finding yourself passing it in the House. Then you start to pass it in the Senate. Then you start to override. You know, you, it take, It's little steps and then it happens. And it's it's incremental. And incremental change is all I've seen. Yeah, and, and that seems to be the, the way that's working. But I, I wanted to uh, to comment more on, uh, on Ian's gubernatorial thing. It yeah, is, it is great. In my mind, it is great that he ran as a Democrat, partially because now he gets to have some debates with uh, with Ms. Hassan and really take her to the tech. I'm sure those are going to be great debates. I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. He doesn't necessarily get on the 9 o'clock news or whatever, but there will certainly be um, media that will want to talk to him, and, and this will be fantastic. Do you think— I learned about— Pardon? Let, let, let me ask a question real quick. Do you think that Governor Hassan will actually agree to debate Ian Freeman? Of course not. Of course not. She'd, she'd, be, she'd be foolish, too. She won't do that. Does Ian have um, a campaign website or a platform? No, <laughs> not to the best of my knowledge. Uh, he's got some information up on the New Hampshire Liberty Party website, which is nhliberty.info. Okay. And he's running primarily on the uh, drug war, specifically the cannabis issue, and also secession. Excellent. Right. Those are terrific issues, especially for a Democrat to debate. Yes. He'll give them a lot to think about. You know, it, it was a, I, I, I just kind of, the, the Republicans are, you know, largely a free stater, maybe not controlled, but not merely influenced. I mean, heavily, heavily under the, uh, the, the free stater uh, wing is the Republican Party. But the first ever free stater to get elected to the House of Representatives was elected as a Democrat. And there are now multiple Democrats in the House of Representatives. And it's definitely a much more difficult thing for the, uh, for the free staters to sort of be in and become part of the Democrat Party. But I know there are a number of Democrat free staters in key positions in the party who have, uh, you know, maybe not super key positions, but I mean, not dog catcher either. I mean, there are people who are running their towns, Democratic Party, running various, you know, there there are Democratic Party functionaries who are free staters. And I would just love to see this because when we get both sides, oh my, OMG. So there's a there's a state representative who's been a rep for many, many years, many, many years. His name is Steve Valancourt, and uh, he has a blog. And I just and, and his blog is very widely read. Um, pretty much everybody who's a political mover and a shaker in in uh, New Hampshire at least reads his blog. They may not like what he has to say. And he's quite libertarian leaning. Uh, he has been a member of the Libertarian Party in the past. He's been elected as a Libertarian to the House of Representatives in the past. He's now a Republican, but he's also been a Democrat. Um, but in his blog post, he says, truth be told, Ian Freeman is my kind of nut. 
Yeah, there, there are a lot of people who think that Ian is their kind of nut, and there's a lot of people that don't think that Ian should be anywhere near politics. And actually, it's interesting in certain parts of the state, the you know free stater activist, if you will, they get told, well, if you want to change things, you should work within the system. And then when those same people file for office to work in the system, they get told, you're just wasting everybody's time. Why don't you go do something else? What well, do you I think about it, that, Dennis? It, it all depends on what they're doing. Um, I guess you could say that if you're doing civil disobedience by sitting quietly at home and smoking a joint, I, I would argue whether you're doing civil disobedience and if you made a big deal about it, it would be argued that maybe you're wasting time. Similarly, there are people doing quote-unquote political stuff that are not really being serious about it, and that could be viewed in the same way. Dennis, thank you so much for the call. And, of course, your call is welcome, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. That is the ProXPN toll-free call-in line. This is Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com on the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments around the world killing innocent people? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, 
non-political currency. Bitcoin is money that cannot be inflated or controlled by any state. By continuing to use their money, you're perpetuating the killing. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available to you now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. It's WeUseCoins.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. And of course, you can call in, take control of the airwaves, toll free 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. That is the Pro XPN toll free call in line. And we'll get into the news and stories that we have here momentarily. But before we do, I want to make sure that I tell you about blockchain. Now, if you've listened to the show enough, you've heard us talk about blockchain.info. Well, they have a new website now. It's blockchain.com. Well, rather, I should say they have a second website, blockchain.com. Blockchain.info is still the regular Bitcoin wallet that you can use. And, of course, it is super encrypted. Blockchain.com is where you can go. They have a merchant app that you can download onto your smartphone, BlackBerry, Android. Sorry, Apple users, not available for you yet or you know, for the foreseeable future. But the website still works on the Apple's blockchain.com merchant app. It allows you to take merchant payments without giving up private information without having to connect to a bank account blockchain.com and blockchain.info so derek i'm sure over the last couple of days you've seen some of these stories online saying that youtube was going to take down the indie artist and remove all of the videos unless the people have signed licenses with youtube yeah, I believe the headline I read was something like, Goodbye Radiohead. And I was like, no, don't don't take away all my favorite music. I have enough problems with YouTube as a content creator myself. They constantly flag my videos, uh, pull them down from people who are watching on from the USA. They're not allowed to watch my videos if they contain certain music files. So, so what's the headline? What's going on now? Well, apparently, according to digitalmusicnews.com, everyone got it wrong. The Financial Times, The Guardian, Music Week, The Verge, The Daily Digest, and even DigitalMusicNews.com. And he links over to an article written by another writer from Digital Music News Uh who got it wrong. He says it just goes to show that a sensationalist headline is too good to pass up. And yes, if YouTube was going to rip down every video containing music that was not signed up for their new Spotify-esque music streaming service, that would be huge news. Sure, Robert Crookson of the Financial Times got the interview of Robert Kinkle, YouTube's head of content and business operations, but even he got it wrong. YouTube has been so secretive up to this point about its alleged streaming service that is possibly going to be called, they, they've got the name down here, uh, but you, YouTube is starting up a streaming service that mm-hmm. they're hoping to compete with the likes of iTunes and iHeartRadio and Spotify, but they've been secretive about it. And... Well, let, let me get back here. They hadn't gone on record that it even exists until today. And Cookson, or rather Crookson, interpreted what Kinkle said incorrectly. Note that it's Crookson's article. Kinkle is not quoted anywhere saying that YouTube will block music videos. Crookson said that, and everyone repeated it. Wow. So they go on, they, they continue. It says... 
you really think that every video that contains music is going to be ripped down if the song has not been submitted to YouTube's new music streaming service? It didn't make any sense. I mean, just on face, it doesn't make any sense. Because, like, look at the Justin Biebers of the world. Aren't they the people who write their own music and then put it on YouTube to share with everybody? Who knows if a video that you upload is a song or not? Or if you sing, or what if you're off key? I mean, right. how could YouTube possibly know that you've uploaded an independent song? Right. So it says that that would be a nightmare for YouTube with lots of room for error. In addition to the indie labels holding out, some artists have direct deals with iTunes and distribute their music there and nowhere else. Not to Spotify, not to Amazon, not Beats just iTunes, but they put their music videos on YouTube. There is no way that YouTube would remove those artist videos for lack of a distribution deal. There are millions and millions of videos uploaded by 14-year-olds, as you said, Derek, some who are singing in their bedroom to a song they just wrote, others doing a cover of a popular song, mm -hmm. and they did not necessarily obtain a license. Mm -hmm. They have not distributed those songs to YouTube Music, iTunes, Spotify, or anywhere else. Do you really think that YouTube is going to start banning those users? What about the web series built on YouTube with original scores? Those scores are not dis distributed anywhere. Are they gone too? And then there's a quote. It says, with the surrounding text and other things I've read, including the partner agreement, I take it to say we're blocking videos from monetization. When they say platform, they mean content ID. Saying they're blocking videos from YouTube doesn't make any logical sense to YouTube as a platform. One thing I've noticed from working with them is they tend to use a lot of insider language when trying to communicate with the masses, and it is very confusing. So they're blocking them from monetization. Big deal. The artists will find another way. They could right. use Bitcoin. Right. So what this means is basically if you upload a video, Derek, and you use some music from Nine Inch Nails. Yes. Or Eminem or Bob any Marley, other most artist, likely. Yeah. Bob Marley. And you don't get the permission from the person claiming to hold the copyright of that song. Yeah, I don't. Then you would not necessarily be able to enable ads on that video. Which is fine. Or if you do enable ads, you would not keep that ad revenue. That ad revenue would go to the person with the copyright. Totally acceptable. Bob Marley can have it all. Well, Bob Marley is dead, <laughs> but the estate of Bob Marley would love to have your money. Yeah. Well, this has happened to me in the past. I've uploaded a video of the show I do, Peace News Now, and I included a clip of a Bob Marley song, and the whole video was pulled, uh, was unable to, and I don't even uh, have monetization on my videos, but the, the video was pulled anyway. Hopefully, this allows for more freedom for artists to include more music. In, in that situation, the video wouldn't be pulled. It just wouldn't have monetization as an option. Right. So the source who was just quoted, who spoke on the condition of anonymity, said that the account referred to is the CMS account, mm -hmm. which is the monetization account that right. you get from YouTube when you become an approved partner of their video monetization program and the account partners use to manage content ID claims. The bigger part of this story isn't even what YouTube is doing. To me, it's that this story spreads so far, so fast, inaccurately. Are we going to see more headlines like this? Possibly. And let's talk about that when we come back. And your calls, welcome, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. This is Free Talk Live. Global warming purports rising CO2 levels while evolution describes mutated DNA. The fraudulent sciences describe effects of iron poisoning and copper depletion. As generations are iron poisoned and copper deprived, the DNA has mutated and weakened as blood types A, B, and O. These blood types and rhesus factor are falsely used as evidence of evolution. Humans were created solely with blood type AB negative. Fraudulent science reports mutated DNA 
coupled with rising CO2 levels in blood, are causing humans to go into extinction. In truth, humans are being methodically exterminated by iron poisoning and copper depletion. Blood type AB is on the Shroud of Turin and matches the healthy population. They claim this is evidence. They are from the line of Christ and thus are His Christ. They are from the lines that were disinherited 2,000 years ago, and now they claim to be His Christ. For further information, go to unveilingthem.com. That is U-N-V-E-I-L-I-N-G them.com. Unveilingthem.com. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way. Love as your guide. And liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in, talk about whatever is on your mind. We've been talking about the story from YouTube that actually was reported incorrectly all over the world. Probably in other worlds, if there are you know creatures using internet on other worlds, they got the story reported incorrectly as well but of course you can call talk about whatever is on your mind 855 450 free that's 855 450 3733 tonight in studio it's Daryl and Derek J Mark and Ian are on the road going to the talkers convention and next week nobody will be in studio everybody will be in the white mountains of 
New Hampshire. I almost said North Carolina for some weird reason. White Mountains of New Hampshire Woo-hoo! at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. It is the largest camping festival in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. And over the course of a week, there will be vendors, dances, parties, karaoke, speakers. I'm one of them. Derek, are you giving a presentation this oh, year? Oh, yeah. I'm going to be... Uh, talking about abortion. That should be interesting. That will be interesting. Uh-oh. I know Ian is also giving a presentation. And, of course, there's a ton of family events. There truly is something for everyone at Porkfest. It isn't just a great camping event. For many people, it is life-changing. You'll get a glimpse of what life could be like for you in the free state Go to porkfest.com to learn more. You can only buy your tickets at the door now. Porkfest.com to get the schedule, get directions, and everything else that you need to know about Porkfest. And, of course, you can Skype into the show. I forgot to mention Skype. Username is lrn.fm. And, you know, call, Skype, whatever. And Derek, we were talking about the headlines you know, go wild. Well, the the quote unquote truth about the YouTube story that was misrepresented. And yeah. then you brought up a really good point that the real story about this isn't what is actually happening with YouTube. It's the fact that something can be so widely misreported mm-hmm. in such a viral manner. And it's partially due to these outrageous headlines. Yeah, and it's becoming more and more common. I've been noticing it because I'm a news junkie. And for the last five years or so, it's been getting more and more difficult for me to tell the difference between a real headline and something that belongs on the pages of, say, The Onion, like a satire piece. Because the news has just been so crazy. I mean, even a headline such as redeploying troops to Iraq, I would think, is not a serious headline. But then you have to do your own investigative work and find out if it's true. So this YouTube story, it didn't make sense on its face, but people weren't willing to give it that second of pause to say, is this a true story? And I include myself in that number. You know, we, we weren't uh, thinking about it. We were just saying, oh my gosh, look at this headline. Must repost to Facebook. Must tell everyone about this new tyranny. Without doing the five seconds it would probably take of investigative work to find out, is this true? Right. And I think it actually took about a day before the you know truth actually came out about what the story actually was. You know what I think it is? Is Facebook has added a new feature that tells you what news stories are trending, and that's how I discovered it in the first place. This is a new thing. I think it's only a year or less old, so this is probably partially responsible for carrying the misinformation that we've all experienced. Yeah, and there's been sort of a... uh, I'm not really sure what the term is to use to describe a phenomenon of sorts sure if you will to come up with the most sensational headlines you can to get people to click on your story yeah and it's what they call click baiting Mm -hmm. meaning that you come up with you know some outrageous headline to get people to click on your story and then the contents of the story have very little, if anything, to do with what is in the headline. Yeah, it doesn't even matter. And, you know, this really is a trend, Daryl, because I was I was clickbaited recently. Someone posted to Facebook a news story saying uh, age legal age of drinking up to 25, and then it had this serious-looking website, and the whole website was a joke. It was like a link to ABC, but then it had some other stuff in the URL. And right, so right. it wasn't really to ABC. I was fooled. And after like 10, 20 seconds or so, it actually changed the article and said, you've been fooled. This wasn't real. If you want to trick your friends, you can type in whatever fake headline you want and send it to them. So fake news spreads faster than real news. Generally, when I want to, you know, joke my friends on Facebook, I will post a link to the Rickroll video. A classic. You you know, the one where uh, Rick Astley, never going to give you up. So I'll post that. 
and then I'll remove the preview to where there's no image, and then I'll just change the headline because Facebook allows you to change the headline, and I'll put it something of official announcement, president resigns. Ah, clever. And then, you know, people will click on it. Several people, they'll comment, I know what this is. Ha, 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 you can't fool me. It's cool because it works both ways. It's the age of information, and so it only takes five seconds to verify the, the truth of a claim. But also, there's all this access to information, so fewer people are doing that five seconds of research. It's yeah. just an interesting phenomenon. Yeah, and I, I've noticed that pretty much my entire adult life is that anytime somebody hears a story that just sounds so outrageous, they never think to check it, and you know that. It's not just internet misinformation. It's all kinds of misinformation. But Corby in Houston, Texas, wants to talk specifically about internet misinformation. Corby, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hi, I just read a listen to a book on Audible called um, Trust Me, I'm Lying by Ryan Holiday. <laughs> and he's a blogger, and he talks about, you know, they'll start off with a headline, just like you said, totally off the wall, whatever will get the most clicks doesn't matter if it's factual or accurate, then a second blog will pick up the quote of the first blog, and usually it's the same person under a false identity. And by the third time it gets quoted by a third website, it went from maybe this and the first one to it did this, and by the third one it's a fact. You know, it's like quoted from other places, and these things actually get picked up, you know, and their whole idea is just to get clicks on, you know, they get ad sponsors, and all they want is ad clicks, and they also do stuff. Go ahead, it, I'm sorry. It's sort of like a high tech version of the old game telephone or operator. I, I don't know if you either one right, of you I remember mean, playing yeah, that game, but th- there would be generally 15 or 20 kids sitting in a circle, and the first person would whisper something in the ear of the second, and then they would have to relay. And by the time it got all the way back around, the thing had been totally changed. From I like cheese to, you know, just something totally different <laughs> that doesn't even sound like I like cheese. What's the solution, Corby? What do you think? Are, are websites just destined to continue to print misinformation because of their ad revenue? Or are they going to seek accountability and truth? Well, you know, with journalism, most of their, their you know goals are just to get something out fast, you know. Truth is something they can edit later, and even <laughs> this book even talked about when there's an update, like say something's you know obviously false, and they'll get the correct information. They'll put the update at the very bottom, and the headline still stays. It can be totally off the wall. President resigns, you know, and then the update will say, "Oops, president of some student council or something," you know, retarded, Doesn't, off the topic. But you know, it's just but the 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 update. It's already gone viral by the time something gets updated, and the sources don't update. You know, the ones that referred to it. You know, and then the last thing is, uh, by the, uh, Ian had talked, I guess he's not there, but he had talked about a 15-year-old that made 100000 off of Bitcoin. I never heard the story. I Hold on. Hold, hold your thought, Corby. We'll bring you back in the next segment because I actually know about that story. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment. And, of course, your calls welcome 855-450-FREE. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Today, people go to college, do coursework, repeat what professors tell them, get degrees, and are issued official transcripts from state-approved institutions. In the future, people will learn online and obtain pseudonymous academic credentials associated with their Bitcoin address. That future is now. At mathgate.info, you can learn basic reasoning skills. Instead of a transcript, you can earn cryptographic proof that the owner of your Bitcoin address learned these skills. For more information, come to mathgate.info. 
Imagine an acne treatment breakthrough that even Proactive says is better than Proactive. Announcing all new Proactive Plus, the revolutionary new way to clear your skin from the number one name in acne care. Proactive Plus is our best, most effective solution ever. And when you call 1-800-721-4255 today, you can have it tomorrow. Proactive Plus is the modern acne miracle that treats your skin beautifully. The plus means more. More precise, targeted medicine for faster, gentler acne prevention. And more skin-loving solutions so your complexion can look bright and beautiful. I am just so happy with Proactive Plus. I don't think my skin has ever looked this good. Call 1-800-721-4255. Be one of the first to try Proactive Plus. Guaranteed 100% risk-free. You won't see this limited-time offer on TV. It's a radio exclusive. 1-800-721-4255. 1-800-721-4255. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here... I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why if you love liberty you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Call in, talk about whatever is on your mind. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And that is the ProXPN toll-free call-in line. But what is ProXPN, you're asking? Well, if you value your online privacy, then you need ProXPN. ProXPN is a global virtual private network that allows all of your online data to be encrypted back and forth even before it gets to your internet service provider. Did you know that most ISPs keep records of every site you visit and every search you make for at least six months and in some cases up to five years? Those records can be obtained by anyone with a court order, so don't be surprised if at some point it becomes normal for, say, part of a job interview that they want to look at your internet search history from the last six months. Without a service like ProXPN, everything you do online is tracked back to you. From downloading movies and music to every single web page you go to. With ProXPN, you simply download an app for Windows, Mac, iOS, or Android, even Linux, although the setup is a little different, and then you just connect to the internet and you're protected. No one can track you or spy on you, and one account works for all of your devices simultaneously. 
No need to have a separate account for each device. Just go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Use the promo code FTL20 and you'll get 20% off the price of your premium account, which if you get the annual plan adds up to only $5 a month. With the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth, servers all around the world to access from, the ability to privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites, and this is important, ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online habits at all. You get all of that with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL, use promo code FTL20, and get the security and privacy you have the right to have. So, Derek, during the last segment, Corby had called in and mentioned the 15-year-old that Ian had mentioned, I think, earlier in the week or possibly last week, that took a $1,000 check from his grandmother in 2012, Mm -hmm. bought Bitcoin, and then 18 months later, sold those Bitcoin for $100,000. Wow. And then opened a website called Botangle.com that is essentially a tutoring service. Mm -hmm. But this young man, Eric Finman is his name, He says that he is hoping to one day make Botangle not just a tutoring service, but an institution that would allow students from around the world to get away from the status quo educational system. No way. And learn completely online. Let me guess. Is this kid homeschooled? He is now. (laughs) He That's wasn't right. He's, before he started the website. Yeah, well, he was going he to need, a government school in Idaho. He doesn't need that anymore. Started the website basically so that he could get tutored himself because some of the things he wanted to learn weren't being offered from his government school. Are you serious? That is so cool. Yes. I mean, look at the solution that uh, this 15-year-old kid is creating and the foresight to be able to see something like Bitcoin as a valuable proposition at 13. And then the I wonder what sort of family members gave him a poke, said like, uh, yo, hey, uh, <laughs> that's... That Bitcoin you got's worth a lot now, isn't it, Eric? Like, what are you thinking about doing with that? No. Well, the the funny thing is, I I read a couple of AMAs, Ask Me Anything, that yeah. he did. Did he do one? One on Reddit, one on a website called Yabbly. That's so cool. And he said that his brother got him started with Bitcoin, gave right. him point two Bitcoin, and he wanted to have more than his brother. I read that he wanted to have more Bitcoin than his brother. <laughs> so the thousand dollar check that he got from his grandmother for Easter. In 2012, wow. he just bought Bitcoin so that he could have more Bitcoin than his brother. And then well, now I'm pretty 18 jealous. months later, turns into $100,000, sold all of the Bitcoin, all of them, and started the website. How do you know he sold all of them? He admitted oh, okay. in that one stinks. of the AMAs that he sold well, all ha- of he's paying, the Bitcoin. He's paying his employees in Bitcoin, so... He must be getting some more somehow. Right. He's not totally out of the game. He's not anti-Bitcoin, right? Right. So the website, you can actually go to the website. You can register. You can pay in Bitcoin. Cool. So my guess is that the Bitcoin he's paying his employees is coming from the Bitcoin that are coming in from the clients. Yeah, I just think it's amazing. It's it's not lemonade stands anymore. It's starting a whole video tutorial website uh, that kids are doing. I mean, what's it going to be like in 10 years? Can't even imagine. Yeah, it's just going to be you know crazy where everything <laughs> is in 10 years. Five-year-olds are going to be CEOs. It'll be crazy. I, I don't know. I just see it getting younger and younger. They don't need elementary school, right? What what grade was this kid in? Uh, 15, so that would be... Well, he what, was like actually a, probably a in high school. Yeah, in high school, probably. Yeah, to be fair. I, I was misjudging his age, but... He certainly doesn't need... Does he need college? Is he even going to go? He has a deal with his parents. If he makes a million dollars before his 18th birthday... Wow. They're not going to make him go to college. Oh, what a good deal. Yeah. Well, you can't argue with a millionaire. Yeah. 
Well, you can. <laughs> well, especially if it's your son. I mean, you, you, can, you can argue with whoever you want. Well, what do you it's think? Probably not wise to do so in some situations. Fair point. But what do you think it's like for these parents? I mean, at one point, I would be proud. But I'd also be a little jealous of my son here, like, uh, hey, son, you got more in your bank account than I do. Uh, there's something wrong with this. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, there, there's something wrong with a lot of cities and states around the country. And Greg, calling in from New York, wants to talk about cities and states and how they're different from neighborhoods. Hmm. Seems like an interesting yep. topic. Greg, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey, guys. Um, yeah, I called in last week uh, talking about this, and I just wanted to say I have a lot of friends uh, from all kinds of political uh, you know, spectrum. And uh, one thing that uh, I always wondered about and uh, I wanted to talk about is basically how is it that the state is sort of singled out and it gets special treatment, the state, um, where I sort of tend to think about organizations in general as having to be run in some way. So you may have management team of a co-op or you may have a, a neighborhood uh, board, you know, watch or something like that. And anarchists are okay with that, but they're not okay with a city having a government or a state having a government necessarily. So I kind of wanted to explore what is really the difference and uh, really get to the bottom of it. Well, I remember your call, Greg. I appreciate the question. I think the answer is that some organizations are structured in a way that is voluntary, meaning people can opt in or out of whether or not they want to be involved. And the state is not one of those organizations. You don't get to choose to leave. For example, I don't have a passport right now. I don't have permission to leave. If I wanted to, I'm not allowed. Okay, fair enough. But let's say you're, you agree that on the level, level of a city, you can definitely leave any city in the United States pretty much. Well, you can, but there are very few places in the world where there is no municipal government. There certainly are some places that are unincorporated and don't have a municipal government, but there's still a county government, a state government, a national government. So there, there's multiple layers of government. So just because you leave one municipality for another doesn't mean that you're getting away from government. Right. So why do you think that is? Why is why are there so few places on Earth, and certainly not the developed places, uh, that uh, don't have any government? Why is every place that's developed seem to have a similar structure? Because there are power-hungry people who want to make sure that they have control over things and people and places. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's just uh, the answer insinuated in your tone there is just because it's a good idea, right? I, I can imagine you you might say, well, why is there a government everywhere if uh, anarchists are against it? It seems like every developed place has one, so why is it bad? But slavery at one point existed everywhere, and just because it was ubiquitous, we didn't say, well, it must be good. Right, and by the way, I don't mean to imply that I think all kinds of governments are good, or even that the kind of government we have today will always persist. I actually think that uh, technology and the internet can replace a lot of the services now that uh, government used to provide, mm -hmm. like long lines. You know, you can eliminate long lines with forms online. Greg, hold, your, like hold your thoughts. We're at the end of this segment. I'll gladly bring you back in hour number two, which is coming up next. This is Free Talk Live. You call in. You take control. Quantum Vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. Travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed With brain implants and artificial gravity A scientific genius and his clever assistant Set out on an adventure through the solar system On a secret mission to find the key To access new frontiers and save liberty QuantumVibe.com From Big Head Press Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. 
MineThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big-time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MineThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MineThings.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, June 19, 2014. Gold's trading around $1,278 today, and silver is trading at $1,991, while Bitcoin is trading at $605.50. Support for Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more at GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. And support comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner. One tera hash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today at bitmaintech.com or call them up, 844-BITMAIN. That's 844-248-6246. In the news, two Austin men have been arrested on charges of terrorism after allegedly conspiring to provide material support to terrorists. That report from KVUE. On Tuesday, the Central Texas Joint Terrorism Task Force arrested Rahul Akashim Khan of Round Rock and Michael Todd Wolf of Austin both 23 years old. The complaint alleges Khan conspired to recruit people overseas to support terrorist activities and violence in 2011. Now, police allege that Wolf planned to travel to the Middle East to help radical groups fighting in Syria. Both men face up to 15 years in federal prison if convicted. Houston Mayor Anise Parker warned voters that police will be pulled from the streets next year if a revenue cap is not adjusted. The mayor made the statement after the release of a study from the Houston Police Department's operations showed that 20,000 cases from last year were ignored due to understaffing. The mayor said the city needs more police officers and the only way to pay them is to have more tax revenue. It's an unusual Austin tradition that will be continued Saturday evening as the 7th annual Bug Eating Festival is held in Zilker Park. Beginning at 7 o'clock, Marjorie Wildcraft of GrowYourOwnGroceries.org will be joined by Alan Davison in grilling up crickets, mealyworms, and any other bugs that attendees bring along. The family-friendly event is $7 for adults and free for children 12 and under. Locally grown organic food will also be served on site for those who just don't have the stomach to eat the bugs. Meals cost $8 a plate. Alcoholic beverages may be brought to the event, but no glass containers are allowed. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Mention promo code LIBERTY, and when you order 10 or more posters, you get 10 free. Online, affordablesound.com, or call them up, 512-459-5253. And support comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM. June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, June 19th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. In a report by Russia Today, a U.K. government document confirmed that British spy agencies hacked messages exchanged over Google, Facebook, and Twitter by changing the definition of commas on the platform. The document obtained through a pro-privacy suit states authorities believe any communication exchanged between people in the U.K. and foreign social media or search engines can legally be intercepted. These types of communications are considered external and therefore subjected to government snooping. Migrants attempting to cross into the U.S. simply listen to the instructions of their smuggler, which are, wait for Border Patrol to pick you up. Coyotes, or smugglers, ferry the migrants across the Rio Grande, instructing them to wait for Border Patrol, which then places them in front of an immigration judge who provides them with a bus ticket to wherever they want to go. An overwhelmed Border Patrol has forced agents away from fighting crime to changing diapers and heating baby formula for the thousands of children who have recently crossed into the U.S. 
A report by Natural News confirms that baby bottles labeled BPA-free from Avent, Born Free, Green to Grow, Even Flow, and Wild Baby all contain high levels of hormone-altering chemicals. The study published in the peer-reviewed journal Environmental Health found that many BPA-free PC replacement products still leach chemicals having significant levels of estrogenic activity, as did BPA-containing PC counterparts they were meant to replace. That is, BPA-free did not mean free from estrogenic activity. The report comes as a shock to parents who thought purchasing BPA-free products meant no harmful hormone disruptors. Further research found that ultraviolet rays activate and unlock hormone-mimicking chemicals in BPA-free bottles made out of polyester and triton. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock Central Time at CoreyMooreShow.com. And support for the Liberty Beat comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Inc., precious metals at reasonable rates since 1977, online at rrbi.co. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, June 19, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. The couple told reporters this week that they routinely urge their son Patrick to devote all of his time and resources to his improv comedy education. We keep telling Patrick again and again that if you don't buckle down and start learning basic concepts like yes and and the Herald now, nobody is going to take you seriously later uh, in life. He has to start thinking about this now. The parents explained that he should try to get as much out of his improv training as possible by attending improv jams, forming a few indie teams, and doing as much bar prob as possible to keep himself warm for those upcoming Herald auditions. The fact is, if Patrick were on stage with his fellow improvisers and one of them were to play, say, a super villain who's afraid of mice, Patrick wouldn't even be able to identify the game in that scene, let alone respond in a supportive way. I gotta say, I had this internship at a law firm, but I quit to do a character workshop and a musical elective. I think this is really gonna pay off for me in the long run. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live kicking off our number two in studio tonight? It's Daryl and Derek J. Ian and Mark on the road. They'll be back Saturday, which means that while the mice are away, the cats will play. Or no, nope. is, is it the opposite? <laughs> got that wrong? While, while, while the cats are away, the mice will play. <laughs> We've taken over the studio tomorrow night. It's going to be me and the lovely Ellen Ooh. in studio and. You, know, you can call in to take over the show as well, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. That is the Pro XPN toll-free call-in line. And, of course, we have Skype as well, username lrn.fm. We do ask that you send a contact request first that will be approved. And then whenever you call in, we will ask you for your topic before putting you on the air. And we're going back to the phones. Greg called in last hour, had a question about why are there so few places on earth without a government? And I, I feel that this conversation deserves more time than it received in the last hour. So, Greg, you are on the air with Daryl and Derek J. Hey, hey guys. So yeah, I thought maybe we can uh, talk about it this way. First of all, we have to state up front, what are our priorities? What do we want to accomplish? Is it better health for everyone? Better quality of life? Less violence? Like what is the goal of getting rid of government? Personal freedom. That, so that, freedom I, I would say that that's thing? the primary goal is more personal freedom, but with more personal freedom, you do get all of those things that you mentioned, Greg. You do get better health care. You do get, you know, an overall better society because people are not being oppressed by government. They're not having the fruits of their labor stolen from them to pay for things that other people think should be paid for. Daryl's right. You get better of each of those things because you have more choices with all of them. Well, okay, so all these things are measurable. I mean, if uh, not having a stable government was so great, then areas without governments, without strong governments, would be further along on health, on, you know, uh, less violence. But that's not what we see. I mean, 
I, governments uh, fail, you don't get uh, suddenly peace and prosperity. I follow your line of thinking, Greg, but I would say that a failed state is not the same thing as no state. And there's never been no state. There's never been a society that started from first principles saying we're going to respect property rights and the rights of all individuals above all. That's never happened in history. It would be the first time here in New Hampshire, that's what I'm hoping to happen, that personal freedom can, can reign free here. Well, uh, I think last time when we were on the call, I was saying that um, initially, the initial state was that there was no government. Um, the Wild West, uh, there was no government, and people voluntarily, they had to get enough people to actually form a state to join the union, and that's what they did. Uh, they wanted to join the union at that time. So why would they want to do that, um, given that they were in this free land and they were, you know, they had to defend themselves from the Indians and everybody else? That's uh, an why, interesting... Why were they, that would be an interesting argument. I'm just curious, how do you know that to be true? How do well, you how do you know that? That was the law. The, the, in order to enter the union, you had to have a certain amount of people that agreed to form a state in the first place. That was part of the uh, the rule. Uh, the other is uh, just the American history. I mean, look government at the school. Are you, are you talking about states. what you learned in government school? Uh, government school, as well as uh, on, online, Wikipedia, and you can look this up yourself. This is, I don't think this is... Uh, uh, I'm not trying to say it's incorrect. I'm just asking where, how you know this to be true, and you're saying that you learned some things in government school and online. And Greg, just... Right. I mean, I try to verify. Yeah. Just, just ahead, one thing real quick is just because enough people joined together and said that they wanted to form a government... And then they wanted that government to become part of the United States does not mean that every person that was living in that territory wanted a government. It just means that the people That's that didn't right. want That's a right. government were outnumbered by those people that did. But my initial point was, if you look at those areas, the amount of violence over there was actually higher. And it was, for a time, the most dangerous place on Earth. Evidence? So... Um, Online, you can look it up independently yourself. Just well, anyone could just make an assertion. I, From I, all, all of the statistics sure, that I've seen, said to. that the Wild West was actually less dangerous than places such as New York City. Yeah, so I would encourage folks listening to right. actually do the research and look up the statistics themselves to see was the Wild West so-called more violent, or was it less violent than what we have today? Exactly. So I guess what I'm all I'm trying to say is, yes, I think over time, the Internet will replace a lot of government functions that only became possible recently. And uh, I think it's just an emergent phenomenon. I don't think uh, there are people who um, I mean, certainly there are people out there hungry for power, of course. But I'm saying that even if there weren't the people who are living in organizations, whether it be a neighborhood or anything else, voluntarily set up some kind of structure and the management team doesn't own everything. The management team is elected to manage everything. It's the neighborhood that owns everything. And in the same way, the state owns everything, and the state is not its government. So that's what I would Greg, say. is the DMV an efficient or practical way to regulate safety on the roads? Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure I can answer that. Well, I would so say that it's not, thing. and I would say that you're making an argument for government based on what's practical. You're saying that the government serves the people, and why else would they institute it? I, I follow that line of thinking, but I would say that it's not what's practical that makes government survive. It's that they use force to enact their will on others. It's the idea that, sure, maybe there was a majority of people who said, you know, we should get together and form a state or we should join the union. But just because some people did that doesn't mean they have the authority to decide what's right for those people who didn't want to join the union. Hey, I agree with you. And by the way, to answer your question about the DMV, I think now with the internet, the DMV is not the most uh, efficient way but before we have this technology, um, look, people form uh, governments, people form organizations, and they have to run them somehow. I mean, that's how it's going to be until we have the Internet uh, and until machines replace the government. Why do you think the DMV is so resistant to change? Uh, it's not. They put their forms online, but certainly because it's monolithic and large. Uh, it's hard to change a large 
uh, organization. You know, when I step into a business, when I'm looking for a new cell phone, for example, I walk in, I'm greeted with a friendly customer service agent. They ask me, you know, to either take a number or the see me right away. At the DMV, it's not that way. You take a seat, you won't be greeted by anyone. At some places, there aren't even benches. There's no number system. Now, some DMVs are very high tech and have uh, gotten to the point where they're the equivalent of a supermarket deli line. You can pick a number and then have a seat and they'll call you by that. You don't actually have to wait in a queue. But I, I would argue that the DMV is resistant to change because they don't have to, Greg. Uh, listen, I, I would agree with you, and even the, and even so, they change, but not uh, so quickly. But look, I, I'll give you an example in cyberspace where there's no uh, DMV, no government, and you'll see the same phenomenon. Look at Apple, look at Google. In cyberspace, they are a government unto themselves. Apple locks down their device, and if you can, if your app, they don't like your app, they will kick it out, and so forth and so on. Google didn't have customer service for a very long time. They can get away with it because of their size, and they also don't have to change. Well, so, Greg, the, the prime you, difference between the DMV and Apple and Google is that on the Internet, you have many different websites and companies that you can choose to do business with. If you want a driver's license, you only have one place that you can go, and that is the DMV, or some places call it the MVD. But you, you don't have the option of, I'm going to go get my driver's license from Kroger because they've got better customer service than the DMV. And the tests that they give actually make sure that I know what I'm doing when I'm out on the road. You don't have that choice with government. You have the choice of this government or, yeah, you can move to another place in the world, but there's still going to be a coercive government. There isn't a place with voluntary government, and that's what we want, is voluntary interactions. This is Free Talk Live. Your calls welcome. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237, and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait, no, no. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from Because you're scared of me. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. 
What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket, shiny badges, start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket, shiny badges, show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in, talk about whatever is on your mind, 855-450-FREE. That's the SACL, or not SACL, that's the Pro XPN toll free call in line. Can't believe I goofed that up. First time in months. Pro XPN toll free call in line, 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And before we get back to your calls and your Skypes, I want to make sure that I tell you about ExpressCoin. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoins or Dogecoins. More easy, so fast, much legal, wow, inexpensive. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end of their website should allow them to be even more focused on meeting your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, or wire transfer by starting off at expresscoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone by downloading the app at expresscoin.com. Expresscoin, formerly cash into coins, now Expresscoin. I've used the service. They literally do have excellent customer service. It's not just something that they put in their commercial. It is something that they live and they do. Love them. Have you ever used Express Coin? Uh, not as Express Coin, but as cash into coins. And excellent customer service, uh, very communicative, quick, easy, fast. Loved it. Yes. Uh, what, what's the saying here? More easy, so fast, much legal, <laughs> wow, <laughs> inexpensive. <laughs> the much and legal always cracks me up. If you're doing less than $40, there is no fee. And if you're doing over $40, the fee is minuscule, and you can actually donate some of that fee to a couple of charities really? if you want. That's yes. neat. So back to the phones and the fun, or actually, in this case, to the Skype. Rusty calling in from Texas on the Skype, username lrn.fm, listening on the iPhone, wants to talk about government unions. Now, I personally don't like the idea of government employees being unionized. Rusty, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I kind of have mixed feelings, and that would be because I think when the college athletes, they unionize, they're, I would think, de facto or similar government employees, they're going to have a seat at the table now and you know get get some – more reasonable compensation when they go to the table. When you're talking about police, on the other hand, where they have a union and the only thing they fight for is less accountability, it seems like to me, and have this rigorous process so that it's fair for the, you know, their members, it seems kind of ridiculous. So I'm trying to see if there's what the pros are and what the cons are 
because union, unions themselves seem to be going, I think it's almost 50% or 50% of union members are now government employees. Hmm. So, uh, I thought it was well over 60% of people that are unions or government employees. It's a lot. I Either yeah. way, yeah, it's a lot. And I would say that the largest con of government employees being unionized is that when the quote unquote labor and management go to the negotiating table with a regular business, the management says, listen, this is how much we made last year. We you know, have been very consistent on our profits. There's not really a lot we can do to increase the profits to be able to pay you guys more. So how about we do X? Well, with government employees, the management can't say, you know, we only have this much profit because the labor can say, well, just raise taxes. You guys do it all the time to pay for stuff you want. Just raise taxes to pay us more. And so what happens? The governments wind up raising taxes so that they can pay their government employees even more than what they're worth. I know when I was living in Pennsylvania about 10 years ago, the toll workers went on strike because they were upset about the proposed $20.50 per hour that they were being offered to sit in a booth and count change. Who even needs a human doing that job? Couldn't a machine do that? Well, a machine could do that, but Derek, if we get a machine, then we're laying off hundreds of people. And, you know, that that's more people on unemployment. Yeah, but to Rusty's point, hey, I'm pro-union. I like the idea that the little guy can join up with other people and then negotiate as a group against this, you know, power monolithic capitalist who, who may very well be trying to uh, squeeze them out of every last dime. So I'm pro-union in that respect. But there's something totally different about a government union. I can only think we could use the same word union because as Daryl pointed out, there's no downward pressure. Like normally there's this scale, this balancing act that happens between the unions at a private organization and the capitalists, right? Like they sort of even out. But with government unions, Who's on the other side of that? There's no capitalist. It's politicians. And those politicians aren't footing the bill. You can bet they're not paying anything. So there's no downward pressure. When their counterpart asks for more, they have no mechanism to say, we don't have more. They just take more from you. And then one other problem that I have with unions, and I I will agree with Derek, I like the idea of unions. But the actual in-practice, real-world example of how unions operate, I don't like. Because while we're told that unions are labor versus management, what unions actually wind up doing is putting labor against labor. Hmm. Because, what do you mean for by example, that? let's just say that I own a company, yeah, uh, Daryl Co. Got it. And Derek, right now, I have contracted with... Derek International Brotherhood cool. to be my employees. I follow. And your union comes to me and says, Daryl Co., we need more money. And I said, listen, my profits have dropped each year over the last five years. I can't give you more money. Yeah, and at the say, end of the day, you've and, got a bank account with a balance that means something. And then you say, well, that's it. We're going on strike. Rusty and his group of employees could not then come work for Daryl Co. because of the contract Mm. saying that Daryl Co. will only do work with Derek's International Brotherhood. Uh, So I see it really is labor against labor in that respect. Yeah. Hmm. Rusty, anything else to add? No, no. I I just want y'all's insight on it. Uh, I appreciate, you know, your time. And uh, Derek, great to finally, you know, talk to you. I feel like I know you're watching your YouTube videos. Cool. Thanks, Rusty. (laughs) I hope you all have a good one. All right, rock on. Thank you very much, Rusty. And we will go back to the phones. Robert in Bellows Falls, Vermont, wants to talk about the DMV. Robert, do you have any experience with the DMV? Well, no, not personally. I've never worked for them. But I I had a rather really interesting experience at the DMV 
earlier this year, and I, because I had another birthday, and I had to renew my license. All right, hold your thought. We will bring you back momentarily. I want to find out about Robert's experience. And, Derek, you've got an interesting experience that you may or may not want to share with the audience about the DMV. Listen up, all you preppers and survival enthusiasts. Sigma 3 Survival School has a brand new survival instructor training program that will teach you everything you need to know about survival and then license you to teach our survival programs so you can make a substantial profit from it. If you have always wanted to learn to be completely self-reliant and would like to make money at it, then check out Sigma 3 Survival School Survival Instructor Program at survivalschool.us or call 479-561-3886 today. Gentlemen, in search of a million dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com If you're looking for work, the person you are applying to may be even more nervous than you are. And the way things are now, your references have never been more important. Here are three tips. First, know that employers are checking. Every hire is under the microscope these days. Second, they won't just be checking references you provide. Figure that all of your ex-employers will get a call and be asked, would you hire him or her again? Third, assume you will be Googled. So before you apply, remove all those party animal photos from your Facebook page. Even if you're not in the job market, effective communication skills have never been more important. With money and attention so scarce now. For more tips for job seekers and getting better results in all your day-to-day communication, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. You give someone an ounce of liberty and they'll go around abusing it and harming everyone else with it. If we legalize guns... People will be shooting people everywhere. If you legalize prostitution, people will be having sex on the street corners. (laughs) If you legalize drugs, we'll have heroin vending machines in the streets. We've heard it all on Free Talk Live. (laughs) They take it to the most absurd, illogical extremes. And you're absolutely right, Alexander. It's okay for them to have freedom. Yeah, you can give them a gun. They won't go around shooting people. But watch out with their neighbor because you give them a gun. They'll go around in a ramp page around the city killing everyone oh oh but yes they can be trusted and apparently the government can be trusted too because magically magically we only elect the best of the best the cream of the crop the bureaucrats that are administering (laughs) these programs are the upper echelon of society the most trustworthy individuals sometimes when i squint i swear i can see a halo above their heads (laughs) free talk live seven nights a week from seven to ten eastern live on the liberty radio network at lrn.fm Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Welcome back to Free Talk Live. You can call in, take over the airwaves, 855-450-FREE. 
That's 855-450-3733. We'll get back to Robert, who wants to basically give us his DMV story. We'll get to him in just a minute. But first, I want to make sure that I tell you about modafinil. Do you need focus? Are you feeling fatigued trying to get that extra edge when it counts? There's just so much. There's just so much going on all at once in our lives these days. Every moment, it seems like we can't keep track of everything and we're tired. Don't you wish there was something that could get you out of that rut? Give you the focus that you need and help you get things done? Well, there may be. Modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world continue to talk about how Modafinil from modup.net is making the difference in their work, giving them that critical edge that they need. Check out modup.net. Look into it for yourself. They offer fast delivery worldwide for guaranteed high-quality modafinil at an amazing price. At modup.net, or rather, and modup.net is a supporter of the Bitcoin community. That's right. You can order from modup.net with Bitcoin and get a 33% discount. And to make the deal even sweeter, use the code FTL and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. So use that code FTL. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility, however, to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Please, we recommend you look into it for yourself, but we're sure that you'll find modup.net offers a great service at a great price. That's modup.net. Use the code FTL. It's modup.net, code FTL. Back to the phones and the fun. Robert in Bellows Falls, or Robert in Vermont, as we lovingly know him at Free Talk Live. You've got a DMV story that you would like to share. Yeah, I uh, went to the DMV to renew my license this year. And the woman that I spoke with, she told me, she said that there's a a new form that you have to fill out. Now, I don't know if it's federal or not. I'm thinking it probably is. And you briefly fill out the form, and you get a, it's It's like a, I don't know, it's like, a, like, a, like, a, like an authorization on your license so you can go into, like, any one of the federal buildings. Oh, you know? okay. You must be talking about the real ID compliance that th- this was passed several years ago. It was added into some other bill as one of these amendments or riders. And when the real ID was actually being passed, they tried, they being Congress, tried to pass this thing on its own merit, and it was shot down. So instead, right. they decided, let's add this on to this other bill that we know is going to pass. And somehow it wound up getting enough votes to be an amendment on this other bill, wound up getting passed. And what it does is says that there's a bunch of federal requirements that the states must implement in order to be able to give someone a new ID card or a driver's license And several states across the country, including New Hampshire, have passed laws saying we will not comply with this mandate, primarily because the feds are not funding it. They're telling us that we have to do all this stuff, but they're not giving us money to comply. And I believe that Vermont is in compliance with Real ID. So that's probably what it was that you had to deal with. Now, Robert, did they wind up taking your fingerprints? No, they didn't do that. I mean, I didn't go ahead and do this, you know, because I wasn't really, I just didn't really dig into it enough because there was a lot of people behind me, so I didn't really get a chance to speak with this woman long enough about it. But the thing that kind of bothers me is I feel like I'm being strong-armed because if I don't take this, 
they'll they'll take my my driver's license. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And I I'm yeah. just lucky enough to where I lived in Arizona for a while. And I'd still, for certain reasons, claim an Arizona residency. And the driver's license that I have in Arizona expires on my 65th birthday. And that driver's license is not compliant with real ID. Huh. Wow. So some of us are luckier than others in that we don't have to go through the renewal of a driver's license so what what are you going to wind up doing? Because the end of the month is right around the corner. I I really don't know. I mean, I guess I should probably go down there and renew this. But I'm not happy about it because of the fact is that it's not done because I'm out of choice. It's done because I'm out of force. Right. That's what I don't like. Yeah. You know, it's being the owner of a thing that gives you the authority to make rules about how other people use it. So if you come into my house, I can have a rule that says you have to wear a purple hat. And as crazy as that may be, you're free to not come into my house. And uh, But with the DMV, there is no situation like that. Well, There's the, they, they claim ownership they, of the little piece of plastic that they give you. Not that. The roads. They claim ownership of these roads. And did they really have the authority to claim this land? Or did they take it by force? I say they took it by force. Well, I'm thinking that uh, I mean, when I went to school, they taught me, they said that Christopher Columbus is the one that discovered America. Well, yeah not the case because when Christopher Columbus came here, the Indians were already here. Yes. Yeah, and even before Columbus, like, what was it, 400 years before Columbus, Eric the Red came across and, you know, the Vikings explored what is now New England. We know this because there's artifacts and there's documented history, but because they didn't colonize, it's considered a historical anomaly that they even visited. Exactly, and you know, uh, it was not, it was it was those individuals back then. They took the land, you know, from the Indians because uh, they the Indians had what both North and South America, and they took all of the land. So, what are you going to do, Robert? Are you going to comply, or are you going to just say, "Yeah, forget it"? I don't know yet. I, I, I may, I may just say, yeah, you know what? Forget it. Maybe because I, I'm just an old man. I don't draw a lot of attention or anything. So maybe I might get lucky, and you know, uh, I can, you know, still drive, and maybe I get lucky. I won't get pulled over. What do you think would happen to you if a government agent were to learn that you were driving without their permission slip? Oh boy! Depends on I'm which sure side of the I... river he's on, for one. Why do you mean? What do you mean by that? Well, Bellows Falls is right on the border of Vermont and New Hampshire. So, so depending on which side of that river he's on, depends on how bad the punishment will be. Oh, here in yep. New Hampshire, they have something they call a habitual offender status, to where if yep. you have, I believe it's two or three moving violations within a certain number of years, they can and do put people in jail for up to one year. Hmm. Now, I want to be clear. I would view that as legitimate if the roads were privately owned. But there is no option to choose other roads. You get one option. It's the state roads. Yes. And you have to play by their rules. But I don't agree that they have the authority to set those rules because they didn't legitimately acquire that property. Yeah, I agree. Robert, keep us posted on what you decide to do with either the renewal or non-renewal of the little piece of plastic that says that you get to drive on our roads. And of course, you can call in, talk about the DMV or anything else, 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. There's a lot of confusing information out there about Bitcoin mining. Customers have been burned by companies taking their money on pre-orders for Bitcoin mining equipment, only to receive their equipment late and miss out on opportunities to mine Bitcoins. But that doesn't mean Bitcoin mining is impossible. You just have to find an honest company to do business with. If you want to mine Bitcoins and you want to do it now, no pre-orders, no waiting. 
look into the Antminer products from Bitmain. Their competitively priced Antminers are in stock and ship from the U.S. as soon as you pay. You could buy an Antminer today and be mining Bitcoins tomorrow. The Antminer line offers the best mining power per dollar currently available. 20% of the mining power in the Bitcoin network is contributed by Antminers. Not only that, but Bitmain is committed to support. You can get tech support and warranty service over the phone by calling 844-BITMAIN. For commercial accounts, they'll even travel to your data center to install your equipment. Get all the details at bitmaintech.com. That's bitmaintech.com. You've been lied to. Lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my Inc. Magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, because Wall Street's 401k and other investment plans have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash several years ago, I said enough. Since then, I've discovered an IRS-approved way to safely grow my money up to 12 to even 17%, cut taxes dramatically, but also have my money protected when the next crash comes. Call now to talk with a specialist to discover this little-known strategy to potentially build a million-dollar tax-free retirement income, get potential 12 to 17% returns, and never lose when the next crash hits. Call 888-885-8820 and discover this tool that people like Walt Disney and J.C. Penney used to safely grow rich. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling. Call 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. Again, that's 888-885-8820. Hey guys, Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the morning roar. That's right. Every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of The Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the ideas of liberty daily. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live. You can call in. Take over the airwaves. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Or you can call in on Skype. I guess technically it's not calling when you use Skype, but you can Skype into the show like Aaron has done. We'll get to Aaron in just a moment. That username is lrn.fm. And, of course, you will need to send a contact request first. We will approve that. And then you can call in. We will send you a message asking for the topic and where you are calling from. And before I get to Aaron, I want to make sure that I let you know about BuzzBox over at coffee.freetalklive.com. You can get a free pound of the best of the best coffee, BuzzBox. It is shade grown, 100% organic, and top one grade Arabica. 
Coffee is a very absorbent crop. This makes the organic certification that much more important. Buzzbox is com- competitively priced with other high-end coffees, but they do something that other coffee producers seem to care nothing for. They have set up a program that allows people around the world to buy into their co-op. Free Talk Live is attempting to recruit 1,000 listeners, just like you, to order their coffee from coffee.freetalklive.com, thus allowing us to finance 100 microloans through World Vision. Help us change lives by offering people in poverty an opportunity to change their own lives. Get started now by getting your free pound of coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. You do have to pay for the shipping, and you can cancel your subscription at any time. But you can sign up, coffee.freetalklive.com. And yes, it is a subscription, but you get to tell them how often to send you the coffee. You could say, give me a pound every week. You could say, give me a pound every two weeks. You could make it every month. You set the duration of time, but again, you can cancel at any time and you get a free pound of coffee, Coffee coffee.freetalklive.com. Going to the Skype now, Aaron calling in from Pennsylvania wants to talk about privately funded wars and slavery. Now, I'm guessing, Aaron, that these are two separate things and not people privately funding slaves to go to war. (laughs) That would be true, Daryl. I just wanted to mention quickly the other day when Mark said that he didn't mind privately funded wars in Iraq, and I just wanted to say that I believe that's in conflict with the non-aggression principle. Even if it was privately funded, it's still not good to go fund wars. Well, I, I don't think that Mark was advocating funding a war privately in Iraq or Afghanistan or any other part of the world. I think the point that he was making, and of course you would need to call in Saturday night to clarify with Mark, but right. you know, my, my interpretation of what he has said, because I've heard him say this several times, is that his main problem with war is that he is being forced to pay for it. Now, if you, Aaron, wanted to take your money and hire you know, the 16th airborne whatever it is to go somewhere and kill people, as long as he is not being forced to pay for it. So that is my objection as well, is that I am being forced to pay for murder. Now, if right. you or anybody else wanted to privately fund it, I would still object to it on moral grounds, but I'm not being forced to pay for it at well, that point. I want to hear Aaron out. He said that he doesn't feel this jives with the non-aggression principle. Can you explain? No, no. What Daryl said makes sense. It, it, I just didn't understand it. Oh, okay, great. It, <laughs> basically, I thought Mark was saying that war should be fought, but it shouldn't be done with government funds. But uh, the the thing that I really wanted to talk about with you guys tonight was uh, where does slavery start? I was having this discussion with a friend about us being slaves to the government because they mandate a certain percentage of our, our lives, basically. If time is money and money is time, then when they take our money, they're taking our time, they're taking a percentage of our life away from us. Obviously, no one would let them take all of our life, but they seem to be okay with a portion of it. And I said that's still slavery. And he said, but it's not if they choose to accept it, if they want to accept it. Uh, But at the same time, well, it's still even even if you choose to accept it, it is still slavery. It just becomes a voluntary form of slavery. But you are no less a slave because you choose a master. And then there's a there's a brilliant work written by Robert Nozick. It's called The Tell of a Slave. And it tells a story and it goes through nine steps. And I'm not going to read all nine, but it starts off that you are a slave completely at the mercy of a brutal master. He is often cruel and beats you in the middle of the night. The master becomes a little more kind and beats you only when you break one of his rules. 
and then threw out a couple of steps. Instead of working every day for your master, you only have to work a certain number of days. And then the master says, okay, instead of working for me for four days, you can work wherever you want, but then give me four-sevenths of the fruit of your labor. And then at a certain point, the slave master allows you and the other 10,000 slaves to vote on certain things in which the slave master is indifferent. And at the end, it says, the question is, from what transition from case one to case nine makes this no longer the tale of a slave? The point being is that just because you get to vote on certain things, you are still a slave because someone is claiming to basically be your master and claiming ownership of a portion of the fruits of your labor. Right. No, that's right. But it's still a voluntary interaction. So like a certain is percentage it? of society is happy to be, seem to be happy to be sheeple. They seem to be content with their lives the way it is. Right. No, 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 no. Just no. You're. I think you're confusing a voluntary interaction with uh, people being happy about not having choice. You know what? You asked the question, where does slavery start? My answer is it starts with the removal of choice by force. And so just because people are happy to sit in line at the DMV doesn't mean that they are without choice. You see so, what I'm saying? Please. Well, by that logic, everyone, like 99.9% .9 of the world is born into slavery and yes. lives their whole life there. Yes, that's true. So when we talk about some group enslaving another group, it's just slaves fighting slaves over who had the worst master. Yeah, often that's the case. Um, but I think that the world is moving away from that old model. The more we're able to examine ourselves, examine our history, we say, hey, that wasn't such a great way to live. When we engage in voluntary interactions with our friends and neighbors, that's when we get the greatest outcome, the most equality, uh, the highest standard of living. So we're learning these lessons throughout history, and hopefully we'll get to that point of a voluntary society. Do you think we'll actually be able to do it, or do you think people at their root are selfish and will never actually be able to make that progression? Oh, great question. I think it's because they're selfish that we will be able to achieve that. It's because of people's selfish motivations that they seek more independence, and by seeking more independence, they have to please their friends and neighbors. They have to serve one another in order to gain more for themselves. So, yes, we will have that voluntary society, I believe. Because of our selfish motivations. Do you think – so I, I, I can see that as uh, well, many people are farsighted enough basically to see what their consequences are going to do and it's better to be voluntary. But so many people are able to take that quick buck. Like they're not going to look back if they sure. are able to pick a wallet without anyone seeing or take something from the government without any more consequences. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, what's your point? So what? There's going to be the, there's going to be those people. And then there's always going to be people that want a master. There's always going to be people that don't want masters, and there's always going to be people that want to be masters. So well, even it sounds like we're always going to have this structure if there's always those people seeking those positions, then we'll never really leave what we got. Well, I I don't ever think that the entire planet will live in a voluntary society. But I certainly think that a segment of the population at some point will create a voluntary society. And people that want that voluntary cooperation will seek one another out. And I, I think that it's going to happen at least for a small segment of the population and hopefully even more. Check out Murray Rothbard for more. Stay tuned. Hour three coming up next. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in 855 450 free. Gold Bond presents Shaquille O'Neal. So I'm hanging out with my Gold Bond buddies, and they're like, Shaq, Shaq, great job with the Gold Bond powder spray. People love it. So I'm soaking in the good vibes, kicking off my shoes. Next thing I know, they're coming out with a new foot powder spray. Boom. Shaq strikes again. Gold Bond No Mess Powder Spray cools and refreshes your body, and new Gold Bond Foot Powder Spray has two times the odor-absorbing powders to do the same for your feet. Stay cool. 
with Gold Bob. Now is the time for new flooring in your home because Lumber Liquidators has every floor on sale with the end of quarter clearance sale on right now. Get huge savings on all flooring like quick click pre-finished hardwood for $169 a square foot, solid hand-scraped horizontal bamboo for $179, and this week and only get 8mm cherry laminate for just $0.69. Cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com to find the store nearest to you. Special 24-month financing is available. But hurry, this end of quarter clearance sale ends Monday, June 30th. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Thursday, June 19th, 2014. Radio VR News. President Obama has been huddling with congressional leaders on how to halt the advance of a Sunni militant group in Iraq. Vitals correspondent Mark Smith reports. The president met with the leaders of both houses for just over an hour. Reporters were allowed in at the start for a brief glimpse, but afterward the leaders left without comment. And the White House provided the barest of details, just that they discussed options for stiffening the Baghdad government and for getting it to rule in a less sectarian fashion. Aides say Obama hasn't decided yet on any military moves, but is dubious about airstrikes, in part because it's unclear exactly what targets could be hit that would be effective against the al-Qaeda-inspired insurgency. Mark Smith at the White House. House Republicans meet behind closed doors today to choose some new leaders following Majority Leader Eric Cantor's stunning primary loss. Jerry Bodlander has the details. With Majority Leader Eric Cantor giving up his leadership post next month, number three House Republican Kevin McCarthy is expected to win the election to succeed Cantor. Conservative Congressman Raul Labrador is waging what's considered to be a long shot challenge. It could take more than one ballot to decide the race for the number three spot, likely the best chance conservatives have of joining the GOP leadership. Deputy Whip Peter Roskam of Illinois is running, as are Steve Scalise of Louisiana, who heads the Republican Study Group, and Marlon Stutzman of Indiana. Jerry Bodlander, Capitol Hill. The bipartisan proposal in the U.S. Senate calls for raising the federal gas tax to replenish the soon-to-be insolvent fund that pays for highway and transit projects. Martin DeCaro explains. The 18 cents a gallon gas tax last raised in 1993 would increase 12 cents over the next two years, then be indexed to inflation under legislation proposed by two senators. Transportation policy expert Joshua Shank says it's a sound idea. You'd probably keep the highway trust fund in decent shape and sustainable for at least another decade, if not more. But he says it may be politically impractical. In the House of Representatives, the chances of any tax increase being passed even with associated tax cuts, is highly unlikely. Which means Congress could punt again on a long-term solution. Martin DeCaro, Washington. Asthma rates are dropping, but experts are not breathing easier. Correspondent Ross Simpson has the story. A new survey suggests asthma in the U.S. may finally be on the decline. But the results are so surprising, health officials are cautious about claiming a downturn. The findings come from a large national health survey conducted last year. The drop could just be an unexplained statistical blip, and therefore officials at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention are waiting for data from this year before proclaiming asthma is on the decline. I'm Ross Simpson. 
Amazon is showing off its hot new smartphone, Fire. Ed Donahue reports it'll be available at the end of July. It's called Fire. This phone is gorgeous. Amazon's Jeff Bezos says this phone is bigger than an iPhone. It's 4.7 inches, absolutely gorgeous display. It has the ability to render images in 3D. Another feature is Firefly. It lets you take a picture of something and then you can buy it. I can tap on any of these items and there are actions. So I'll tap on the book and you can see I can buy the Kindle edition. I can buy the paperback. Fire faces a crowded smartphone market. One retail expert says this goes back to Amazon's mission, which is to sell stuff. I'm Ed Donahue. The Presbyterian Church USA could vote at a convention this week to join the Israel divestiture movement. Correspondent Warren Levinson tells us why. The Reverend Jeffrey DeYo insists the resolution before the Presbyterian Church USA General Assembly is incremental. It's divestment from just three companies that participate and profit from the harmful occupation. The Presbyterians' numbers are declining, and their investments in the three companies, Caterpillar, Hewlett-Packard, and Motorola, are small. But voting to divest would put the church in the midst of a hot Mideast controversy and not help anyone, says retired pastor John Wimberly. I mean, Israel's behavior is not going to change. The Palestinians' behavior is not going to change. An earlier version of the resolution failed by just two votes in 2012. I'm Warren Levinson. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Ziggle. And I'm Rick Young. Already struggling to get by on the basic necessities of day-to-day -day life, lunatics across the nation confirmed today that they are now barely able to afford the quickly rising price of car meat. I've got 14 Barbara Streisands to feed and three more on the way. Day and night they shout, we're hungry, Admiral. We want grade A and a loaf. We want Nissan truck. I just want to know what Bruno Mars plans to do about this. He sits around all day eating Audi ribeye and limousine bouillabaisse while we scrape by with taxi shanks. Meanwhile, the men at arms are still overseas fighting the war on Wheel of Fortune. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. Kicking off our number three in studio tonight, it is Daryl. And Derek J. You will notice that neither one of those voices or names was Mark or Ian. They are on the road heading down to New York City, going to the Talkers Convention that takes place twice a year. And they will be back on Saturday but in the meantime, it's, you know, the, the mice are playing tonight. It's Daryl and Derek tomorrow. It's Daryl and the lovely Ellen. But of course you can call in, you can take control of the airwaves. 855 450 free. That's the pro XPN toll free call in line. You could also call in with Skype username LRN.FM. And I've got an interesting story, and I think that this is actually huge news for Bitcoin. The company BitPay, which is one of the two major Bitcoin payment processors, they have signed a deal with ESPN. It's actually a subsidiary of ESPN that they signed the deal with to become the prime sponsor of of one of the college football bowl games. Now, in the college, prime sponsor or just one of them? They are the prime they have the naming rights for the St. Petersburg Bowl. So, this year, next year and at least in 2016 because they signed a 3-year deal and based on what Beefo Brady wow. was paying. It's a multi-year deal? Yes. That's excellent. Three now, year I, deal. I am not a sports guy, Daryl. Give me an idea for someone who has no idea, how big of a deal is this? So the St. Petersburg Bowl. Yeah, what is that? 
it's one of the college football bowl games. The the way college football works mm-hmm. is you've got the regular season and then to reward teams that do well, they put them in what they call a bowl game. Mm-hmm. And I think there's like 35 bowl games now. So basically 70 teams get rewarded with postseason games. So is this just one of the bowl games? This or is, is just this one be... of the games. Okay. The teams that go play in this game will each wind up getting like half a million dollars. Okay. Nearly 2 million people will watch this game on television. Mm. About another 80 to 90,000 people will watch this game in studio or in the stadium. Right. And I read and on this article because bit co- or bit pay bit pay is the prime sponsor, they will be selling tickets to the game for Bitcoin. Radical merchandise inside the stadium will be available for Bitcoin. Oh, man. Generally, they will sell merchandise on their website as well. That will be available for Bitcoin. That's excellent. Meaning, how, how are they going to train all these employees? Uh, are they going to be walking around with smartphones or what? Well, are, are we really the that prime far? Sponsor, they are probably going to be able to yeah, they'll put do some their own employed or do some kind of training for people. Makes sense. But I think that this is huge news, and I'm trying to figure out if it's better news for Bitcoin or for college sports. Well, for for me, it got me more interested in the college sports because I would never pay attention to that if it weren't for Bitcoin uh, jumping into the game here. Right. And did I mention the amount that I think that they paid? No. Based on what Beefo Brady's was paying under their previous agreement for the naming rights, Mm -hmm. They were paying $400,000 a year. So based on that figure and assuming that the figure is going to be somewhere in that same neighborhood, BitPay has probably put down $1.2 million for naming rights for the next three years for this game. Yeah. And then you figure all of the merchandise that they're going to wind up selling, all of the free advertising that they've already gotten Because of being the prime sponsor, I did a search because I wanted to figure out how much they wound up paying, did a search in Google News, and came up with hundreds of articles from businessinsider.com all the way to all of the sports websites. So what is it? What's the figure? Well, they they haven't released that publicly, so Mm. we can only speculate based on what Beefo Brady's had previously paid, but they put out a press release, and I want to just read from this real quick. It says, ESPN Events, a subsidiary of ESPN, has announced BitPay, the world's leader in business solutions for the Bitcoin digital currency, as the new title sponsor for the annual college football postseason game played in St. Petersburg, Florida. Hooray! Beginning with this year's December 26th game, which the day after Christmas, by the way. That's a big deal. There could be a lot more viewers than normal. A lot of people watch those games just because it's right around the holiday. Yeah, I think something like 100 million households in the U.S. can watch uh, ESPN or maybe 100 million people or something like that have access to ESPN. Yeah, I I think pretty much every household in the country for the most part. So that could be a lot of eyeballs watching this screen, learning about Bitcoin for the very first time, saying, wait, what? You can buy tickets? You can buy hot dogs? All with Bitcoin? The bowl will now be known as the Bitcoin St. Petersburg Bowl. Not bad. And Bitcoin, or rather BitPay, will serve as the title sponsor for three years through the 2016 game. And that's based on the current agreement that they have. And, of course, these agreements can always be extended. Tony Gallippi, who's the executive chairman for BitPay, and he will also be at the North American Bitcoin Conference that we will tell you about in just a couple of minutes. Mm-hmm. Tony Gallippi, the executive chairman, said, Our goal is to continue to move Bitcoin into the mainstream, and sponsoring the St. Petersburg Bowl offers us that opportunity. College football fans and the Bitcoin community represent similar target demographics, tech-savvy men between the age of 18 and 40. By sponsoring the game, BitPay is not only hoping to stimulate the Bitcoin community around the event, but also to further promote interest in the digital currency on a national scale. 
The bowl game will be an exciting opportunity to enable fans to use Bitcoin in a fun collegiate sports environment. With a rapport of over 33,000 merchants and growing, BitPay has led the Bitcoin economy by allowing businesses around the world to easily accept Bitcoin. How many merchants? They have over 33,000. Holy moly. Coinbase. I remember when it was 2,000. Coinbase, which is their prime competition and actually the merchant service provider that I personally prefer. Yeah. They have somewhere near 30,000. My goodness. And each one of these companies is adding more all the time yeah and they're adding more big names dish tv or dish network announced recently that they were going to take bitcoin expedia recently announced that they were going to take bitcoin yeah big names are good but i'm more for the little guy i think bitcoin can help out the independent business owner because it gets rid of those fees that they have to pay to those credit cards it will but the reason that I'm mentioning the big names is because the more places that you can use Bitcoin and mm-hmm. the more widely it's accepted, especially for travel services. Yeah. Oh, I can buy, you know, airline tickets with Bitcoin now. Yep. And a hotel and a rental car. Yeah. And you could already do that through cheapair.com, but they're nowhere near as popular as Expedia. Mm hmm. You know, once and Expedia you it starts taking right. it, no, more and more people that don't even know what Bitcoin is, when they go to the website and they see that as a payment option, they're going to start thinking, whoa, what is this? Because I've heard of PayPal. And remember several years ago when PayPal first really started getting widely accepted to where you could use it as an option yeah. to check out from online merchants? O- almost anywhere, yeah. And now it's almost anywhere online. Yes. But before it was like, Oh wow, I can use this on, you know, walmart.com. I can use my PayPal. I don't have to give them my credit card. Yeah, it was surprising. What will be the really the next level, Daryl, is when some of these major companies that are accepting Bitcoin decide to keep some. Because yes. BitPay does offer that possibility. With BitPay, you can decide to keep maybe 1%, 10% of the Bitcoin and not convert it into dollars yep. into your bank account. You, you can do the same with Coinbase. And if you're interested, the tickets to the football game are $40. And yes, you can, once they make them available, you will be able to purchase with Bitcoin. Your thoughts about this or anything else, 855 450 free This is Free Talk Live. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. If you are struggling to pay or haven't been making your student loan payments, listen carefully to this urgent alert. 
Have you been out of school for 10 or more years and you're still making your student loan payments? Are your student loans past due or even in default? Can't go back to school because of an old student loan problem? Fast Track Student Loans can get your student loans out of default, stop any wage garnishments, stop collection calls, and stop seizure of your tax refund. Give yourself a break. Stop the stress and get your student loan payments down to as little as $25 a month based on what you can afford to pay. One quick 10-minute call could help you solve your student loan problems. So call right now. Not available in all states. Payments may vary based on income. 800-215-6813 Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in, take control of the airwaves, 855 450 free. That's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three in studio tonight is Daryl and Derek J. And Derek has a very interesting story that we will get to in just a minute. But first, want to make sure that you know about the North American Bitcoin Conference coming to Chicago. It's the first Bitcoin conference in the Midwest. And speakers that will be there include Tony Gallippi, the CEO of BitPay. Heard us mention him in the last segment. Big news from BitPay, where they are now the title sponsor of a college football bowl game. I'm sure Tony will have more information about that. Roger Veer, who is known as the Bitcoin Jesus Charlie Lee from Litecoin, Jeff Berwick, the Dollar Vigilante, Jeffrey Tucker from Liberty.me, Vitaly Buterin from Ethereum, and many, many more will be there. And it's from July 19th to 20th. Oh, yeah. And a couple more people that will be there. Mark and Ian, they are going And I'm fairly certain that they are taking the show with them. So they will be broadcasting from Chicago. I believe I'm 99% positive that they are broadcasting from the North American Bitcoin conference, July 19th and 20th. You can get your tickets at btcchicago.com. And yes, I know you're asking the question. Yes, you can buy your tickets to the Bitcoin conference with Bitcoin. That's btcchicago.com. So, Derek, we mentioned football in the last segment, so it seems only appropriate that we continue with the sports theme here. Mm -hmm. And you've got some news about the Washington Redskins, and apparently they're being forced to change their name because something about the name Washington just being too awful and corrupt. <laughs> oh, okay. I see I see what you did there. Yeah, well, Washington's football team just lost its trademark on the name Redskins, uh, at least according to the feds. They could still keep that trademark, and it seems like they're going to. Let's dig into this article at thewire.com where uh, Ben Cawson writes, In a decision released Wednesday, 
the United States Patent and Trademark Office canceled the trademark on the Washington Redskins team name, citing the rule that trademarks cannot disparage persons or bring them into contempt or disrepute. So I've got a question here, and I, I don't think that you would have the answer. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Mm. Have they lost their trademark? You know, it would seem to me that a lot of uh, sports teams would have to lose their trademark if they're going to comply with this rule, because wouldn't that be offensive to Irish people? Yeah, and what about the team named Giants? I, I'm sure that there are some very large individuals who might take offense to the team named Giants. That could hurt their feelings. I agree with you. No one should have a name that hurts anyone's feelings. So Think Progress reports that the U.S. Patent Office canceled six federal trademark registrations for the name of the Washington Redskins and ruled that the Redskins' name cannot be trademarked under federal law that prohibits the protection of disparaging language. Now, the team has been essentially grandfathered in to understand how they originally got there. The rule didn't exist when the original trademarks were claimed. This is a new rule. But the ruling does not mean that the team must stop using the name. That's an important point. They only have to, uh, they, they don't have the federal trademark registration that's afforded to other companies, but they can still defend their trademark using common law and state laws. Okay, so if I wanted to start making my own Washington Redskins t-shirts... You can do that. You can now do that. No, I can't. Why not? Because there's common law and state law that they could use to go after me. They just couldn't prosecute... Well, under federal law. Well, it sounds to me like this is an invitation for all those um, people out there who want to make fake jerseys that they could just now go do that, and they're not going to get in trouble for it, or at least there's under a federal chance. Law. Oh, I see. Under state law, they still may Th come into conflict. There would still be the state law and the, of course, common law, because uh, under common law, and I've read a good deal about trademarks mm -hmm. and copyrights. Yeah. The Peace News Now logo that you use. Yes. I know that you have not filed anything with the U.S. Patent Office for that. Right. But because in all likelihood you were the first person to use that I as made it. a logo, Yeah. then you have common law rights to that logo. That's interesting. Whether you choose to enforce those rights... So if one of our listeners decided, you know what, I'm going to start using Beast News now, and I'm going to take Derek's logo. Oh, man. Now, you could choose to go after them under common law, where you would still have to use the existing court system. Yikes. But you could show, like, you know, dated things of this is the day that I bought the website, this is the day I put up the logo, this, that, the other thing. So I can make the case and show, hey, look, I have this first. I have right. a legitimate claim to this logo. And if you're going to go and use it for some other purpose and make Peace News Now look like it's some other thing, well, then you can't do that. Right. We're, I'm going to appeal that. And, well, and, of course, you know, it, it would require someone to actually enforce their claim. And my guess is that the Washington Redskins would do that. So let's see what they, uh, the U.S. Patent Office says. They write in their decision, quote, We lack statutory authority to issue rulings concerning the right to use trademarks. They can issue them. They can issue special licenses, but they can't, uh, they don't have authority to issue rulings concerning the right to use the trademarks. Now, this is interesting to me for another reason, because government almost never says they don't have the authority to do something. Right. Well, how often do you hear them say that? This is clearly a political move. It's motivated by uh, the, the people who are drumming up this story. And it's just a mainstream story. I think it's time to retire this name. Unfortunately, it looks like the Redskins disagree. So let's, let's continue with this article. They say the the patent office noted that the team's trademarks were disparaging to Native Americans and that the respective times they were registered uh, at the times that they were registered, and canceled the trademarks for both the name and the designs. The team's trademarks had previously struck down by the Trial and Appeal Board in 1992 on grounds that the trademark brings Native Americans into contempt, ridicule, and disrepute, and the marks consist of or compromise scandalous matter. No, 
I disagree with this. You know, if anyone does any research into the the term redskins, it's not about skin color. It's not about like uh, that was what I initially thought. I see a, a logo and the person is red on it, right? But yes. they also are wearing face paint in the logo, and that is the origin of the term redskins. As I researched it today, saw that it was about uh, Native Americans using that term to describe themselves when dealing in treaties with those who've come across the seas. But wait a second, Derek. That's totally opposite of what I hear from the government mainstream and you know the, the stories out of the mainstream. Let's, let's find out more about this mm-hmm. when we come back on Free Talk Live. And of course, your call is welcome, 855-450-FREE. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now, thanks to Dan Pillow, you can get the tax help you need to end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce or eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. With the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. Or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at FPP.cc, as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Have you ever wanted to move to the land of Libpair, Libertarian Paradise, where there's fun for everyone that doesn't initiate force on others, fun for the kids, parties for the adults, buy and sell in silver or Bitcoin, scenic hikes and gun shoots, speeches to educate us all? The Porcupine Freedom Festival is Libpair in the White Mountains of New Hampshire for a week this summer, June 22nd to 29th. Get your tickets now before there's no more room. Porkfest, the event of a lifetime. Porkfest.com. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. 
If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You can call in, talk about whatever is on your mind. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. That's the Pro XPN toll-free call-in line. Or if you have the option of using Skype, I would recommend doing so because the sound quality generally sounds so much better. The Skype username is lrn.fm. And, you know, there are other ways that you can get interactive with the show. And one way is by going to cam.freetalklive.com. That's where you can watch the show, thanks to the studio cams that we have. We've got two of them. One shows a wide shot. The other one is pointing at Mr. Derek J. And it alternates between the two. There's also a chat room that is built into the cam page where you can chat with Derek or chat with some of the other listeners there at cam.freetalklive.com. So we've been talking about the decision here from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office to remove the trademark protection from six logos of the Washington Redskins Mm -hmm. professional football team. That's right. But it does not prevent the Redskins from using the logo and still having state protections, you know, state copyright protections, state trademark protections, and then also federal common law protections still apply on the trademark that they have, even though the U.S. Patent Office no longer recognizes the trademark. Mm -hmm. And I had mentioned that, you know, if somebody decided to infringe on the trademark of Peace News Now, that, Derek, you could choose to take them to court and you would have rights, even though you have never filed documents with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. And I was just informed that someone has attempted to violate your Uh, service mark of peace news now (laughs) that's true yeah michael dean freedom fiend uh he yes did he put a worm on the logo or is it just a cat no no worm up a hairball yeah he's famous for his love of cats and he already doctored my logo and infringed on my trademark no no i i uh i see uh, imitation is the highest form of flattery, so I'll, I'll accept that. Yeah, and th- there are actually loopholes in the patent and trademark and copyright laws yeah. that do allow for satire. So I right. would say the cat hacking up the hairball is definitely satire. Good enough. Yeah. So, th- there's so some there's, more from but this there's article. an update. Yeah, there's an update on this story. Folks will want to know that the team has issued a statement regarding the USPTO's ruling, promising that it quote will have no effect on at all on the team's ownership of and right to use the Redskins name and logo. The team is, quote, confident it will win appeal and the ruling will be reversed and states, quote, the team will continue to own and be able to protect its marks without the registrations. The registrations will remain effective while the case is on appeal. You can read their full statement. It's at thewire.com, but uh, that's that's the crux of their stance. They're going to stay with their name. Why? It's so unpopular. Everyone's talking about this issue. They should just change it. I would definitely get rid of the name Washington from the team name, especially since they no longer <laughs> play in Washington, D.C. They play somewhere in Maryland. Oh, I hadn't even uh, realized that. I think it's that. Cumberland Park. Well, yeah, they've not played in Washington, D.C. in years when they left Robert F. Kennedy Stadium. Oh, well, you know, I brought up this issue of how they should change the name on Facebook, and there were a number of unique responses. One that I hadn't even considered was uh, by a man who brought up the point that the government 
here, the federal government is saying, oh, these terms are offensive to Native Americans. You are not allowed to have a, a patent. We will not protect this or, or defend it. But then again, in the same breath, the government continually offends Native Americans by naming all of their war machines after them. Oh, I thought you meant by keeping Native Americans on reservations and basically making them slaves and wards of the state. No, it's it's like, well, yeah, there's that. But then think consider all of the the different weapons. For missiles, you have Tomahawk cruise missiles, right? For helicopters, you've got the the Boeing Apache, the the Apache Longbow, the Black Hawk, uh the Lockheed Cheyenne, the uh Chickasaw, the Chinook. All of these are real helicopter names in use by the US military. The the uh, Bell Sioux helicopters and the Sioux Scout. Uh, what what about unmanned aerial vehicles? They're called the Gray Eagle, uh, the upgraded Mo- predator most drone. Most people know those as drones. Yeah, they're, those are the drones, unmanned aerial vehicles. Well, they named it the Gray Eagle. Well, what about ships? There's the Wichita class replenishment oilers, the Wichita, the Milwaukee, Savannah, Wabash, Kalamazoo. All of these to, are to be names. Fair, the the ships that you just named are also named after cities in the United States. Yeah, but where? But why are those cities named that? Because of the Native Americans who were there previously. You know, the mission to capture Osama bin Laden included a reference to Geronimo. Let's remember that from 2011. President Obama went on 60 Minutes and saying. Quote, there was a point before folks had left, before we had gotten everybody back on the helicopter, we were flying back to base where they said Geronimo had been killed, and Geronimo was the code name for bin Laden. So here they are, the federal government saying, with one breath, the Washington Redskins, oh, that's horribly offensive, we can't, can't use a name like that, that the Native Americans adopted themselves, but now they're going to continue to name cruise missiles after the Native Americans, tomahawks, and the uh, B- Chickasaw. All of these names come from Native Americans. You know, I see a lot of hypocrisy with this. Yeah, there definitely is a lot of hypocrisy, and Jim is calling in from Virginia, wants to talk about this as well. Jim, you're on Free Talk Live with Daryl and Derek J. What's on your mind? Hey, I'm, I'm thinking it's mostly uh, white, liberal politically correct people that are upset about this, but I don't really have a big position on the Redskins. What bothers me is the federal government is stealing the man's property. Whose property? And the owner of the Redskins, he owns that trademark. Like, like, no, we won't protect it. If, if container loads of Redskins gear comes in from China, you're out of luck. Customs mm-hmm. isn't going to do anything. Mm-hmm. And, that, that that man owns that trademark, paid millions and gazillions of dollars for it, and the federal government just arbitrary and capriciously says, I'm going to steal your property and not compensate you for it. Second thing, it's a completely criminal act. The Patent and Trademark Office already pulled this politically correct thing before. A federal judge already smacked them down and has ruled that it's not offensive. I'm not even on either side of this, but that's race judicata. The matter has been decided. No lawyer in the world could bring that suit without being disbarred. You know, it'd be like me suing you and a judge ruled in your favor, and then I just bring you back into court again on the same exact thing. Well, to to be fair and sort of play devil's advocate here, just to say that, well, a court decided this thing 20-something years ago, nobody has the right to bring another suit, then if that was actually how courts worked on civil suits, then the Dred Scott decision never would have been overturned. Things such as Plessy versus Ferguson never would have been overturned because people do have the right in civil suits, and especially because it's a different group of people that are bringing the suit, then do do you know different groups of people not have the right to file a lawsuit? Jim, I do want an answer from this. I I do want your answer on this. We're coming up to the end of this segment, but I will bring you back next segment because that's not a rhetorical question. The five people who were bringing this suit were not involved in the suit 22 years ago. So do they not have a right to file a lawsuit if they feel that they 
are somehow being dehumanized in such a manner. This is Free Talk Live. Can education be separated from the state? Today, people go to college, do coursework, repeat what professors tell them, get degrees, and are issued official transcripts from state-approved institutions. These transcripts are given to potential employers as proof of coursework. In the future, people will learn online and obtain pseudonymous academic credentials associated with their Bitcoin address. That future is now. At mathgate.info, you can learn basic reasoning skills. Instead of getting a transcript associated with your name, you can obtain cryptographic proof that the owner of your Bitcoin address learned these skills. Then, apply for jobs online using your Bitcoin address instead of your government-sanctioned name. Since mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously, you can be sure that you will not be discriminated against or shown favoritism due to your race, gender, political or religious views, and so on. There is only one factor by which you will be judged, your ability to reason. Be at the vanguard of separating education from the state by visiting mathgate.info. Gentlemen, in search of a million dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com From hackers and identity thieves to government spies, your online privacy has never been more at risk. Go to UnseenNow.com and learn how their unparalleled encryption tools can keep your communications totally secure. UnseenNow.com offers email, chat, voice and video calling, and cloud storage all for free. It's never been more important to lock down your digital life, and now you can. Stop Big Brother in his tracks. Learn how at UnseenNow.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Still time for your calls. If you call in now, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. That is the Pro XPN toll-free call-in line. And real quick, want to tell you about My Magic Mud. My Magic Mud is a holistic remedy for your teeth that removes plaque and detoxifies the mouth of bacteria that causes cavities. 
This product gives you a dentist clean every time you use it, and it is gentle on the enamel. The ingredients in My Magic Mud are also used as dietary supplements, so not only is it, is it an effective whitener, it is also safe to swallow. My Magic Mud is a teeth whitening powder that strengthens your teeth and promotes healthy gums. It reverses sensitivity and soothes any pain you may be dealing with. My Magic Mud was created by Jessica Armand, a liberty-loving homeschooling mother of three. I'm happy to tell you that she will be attending Porkfest this year and will have plenty of jars for sale in Agora Valley. Purchase a jar today at MyMagicMud.com. On the website, you can listen to an interview with biological dentist Dr. Griffin Cole, where he explains a lot of the benefits of My Magic Mud. Again, visit MyMagicMud.com, and you can use this once a day before you go to bed. It protects your teeth throughout the night, making you cavity-free. MyMagicMud.com. I personally haven't had a chance to use it. Derek, you said you haven't either. No, I hope I can try it at Porkfest, though. Yeah, me too. So if you're going to the Porcupine Freedom Festival, find Jessica in Agora Valley. That's the area where they have set up where a bunch of people will be vending different items. MyMagicMud.com online. Back to Jim in Virginia and... I forgot what the question was that I asked during the last segment, but I definitely wanted Jim's answer. Derek, do you remember what I had asked? Uh, no, but I bet Jim, Jim's Jim got it. He's ready. Jim, do you remember? I remember. Yeah, you you asked, well, these are new plaintiffs coming yes. forward and, uh, you know, it's Plessy versus Ferguson and things like that. Yeah, I'm not aware of that. I'm not saying you're wrong. Um, it's my understanding that this patent and trademark board made a two to three decision and that it's a, it's the same action by the same body that did it before. And that's what the one dissenting opinion was. is like, we've already done this. A judge said no. Now we're going with no new facts. It's the same amount of disparagement or not that it was in 94 when we tried this before. Um, you know, I mean, I, I guess it goes to your legal argument. Do you think that court rulings of the Constitution are static or do we have a evolving you know it's sort of like the nfl can you have rules that evolve and uh, i just i don't believe in that but the case has been decided unless a higher court does it you you you're barred they're barred from any legal action it's it, you, so the five the people the the uh, article here from the wire.com says the current challenge was brought to the redskins trademark by five individuals. Just and five it, people. It names them. Amanda Blackhorse, a member of the Navajo Nation. Philip Martin Glover, a member of the Paiute Indian Tribe of Utah. Courtney Sotig, a member of the Kiowa Tribe of Oklahoma. And Marcus Briggs Cloud, a member of the Muscogee Nation of Florida. And Jillian Pappen who testified that she is Native American and believes that people should not profit by dehumanizing Native Americans. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So when did these five people, since when did their uh, opinion matter so much? Since the five people are offended, the whole team has to change its name? I agree with you, Jim. I think there's no justice in this situation. If the government were to be fair, they would give them the money back that the person paid for the trademark, or they'd give something back. They'd make some sort of apology. In this case, they're just saying, well, thanks for all the money. You don't get the trademark anymore. But just well, to reiterate, they still with- have... Hold on, Jim. Just to reiterate, they still have the state trademarks that they have obtained. I know. And but- they have the common law protection of the trademarks. Yeah. So it, it's not a That's thing That's not what of- they paid for. Right, that that's not what they but paid for, don't. but to say that they, you know, can't enforce their trademark anymore is not, you know, it, it's not standing with the actual facts of yes, they can. Well, I don't think they can practically do it because it's the federal government that enforces international trade, and you know that's who's going to steal things. China, they steal everything. I mean, sure, I guess they have some kind of recourse in state courts. But this is a federal issue. But my issue is the federal government has done everything they can do to take their property without compensating them. That's a Fifth Amendment violation. And 
you just can't go to a court case again when you've lost it. You, you don't have hmm. new facts. You, you can't, you know, you have lost it. it, it it's our agency system. That, you know, that's, that's, if you try to get on a Supreme Court, that's the first thing they ask you. What do you think about stare decisis? You know, in case law, it's decided. You just, they're just barred from doing this again. Um, I'm not even saying the Redskins are good, the Redskins are bad. It's just the federal government has no control. Uh, I would agree there that, that this should not in any way be a federal issue. I don't think that the Patent and Trademark Office should be involved in this at all because I don't think that there should be such things as federal patents and federal trademarks because, you know, people I, – I don't think that people can own ideas. This is just nannyism. I think this is you're, – you're absolutely right, Jim, that uh, if they were using law, then it's already been decided, but it's not – determined by law it's determined by emotion and uh, appeal to people's emotions and that's what it's about so it's, it's a political issue it's not about law my, my concern is it's just lawlessness you've got liberals that have a feeling and they have a feeling yep. and they just want to say you know it, you could have a conservative say i don't like planned parenthood uh we're withdrawing their ability to, to use to keep their name or it's just arbitrary um you know they're, they're just not following the laws it's like congress makes laws you know, our current president is a lot like Andrew Jackson. You know, the Supreme Court said you couldn't wipe out all the Indians, and he said, okay, well, you got your ruling. Where, where's your army to enforce it? Jim, thank you uh, very much for the call. Yeah. And, Derek, you have something to sort of go along with this, and it references something that I said about, you know, the team name should just drop Washington from the name. Apparently, Congress is the least popular thing ever. That's right. An article from the libertarianrepublic.com reports about a new Gallup poll. Yes, taxes, spiders, North Korea, it doesn't matter. If you can name it, it's probably more popular than the United States Congress. Is the point Jim was making. There's lawlessness. These people are not accountable. And only 7% of Americans have, quote, a great deal or quite a lot of confidence in the U.S. Congress, according to the new poll by Gallup. Even after many years of brutally unpopular Congresses, that's the lowest level ever recorded, down from 10% in 2013. <laughs> it's not just the least popular Congress, though. It's also the least popular institution of any kind ever recorded by Gallup. So the question... It was part of an annual poll by Gallup measuring public confidence in a variety of U.S. institutions. And Americans are most confident in the military, 74% confidence. That's a, that's a drop from 82% in 2009, but still well ahead of everything else. Yeah. And back to the phones. We've got time real quick for Jim in Arizona. And Jim, I know you are very oh, confident in the military and you actually just hung up. I was going to give you the last minute and a half of the show, and Jim hung up on us. Uh, so, Derek, go ahead and tell us some of the other institutions that are more popular than the U.S. Congress. Well, basically anything you can name, but along with the military, only small businesses and the police have public confidence higher than 50%, while organized religion comes close at 45%. So every single institution is at least twice as popular as Congress. So what is the approval rating of spiders? <laughs> it doesn't list spiders specifically. But it's in the first sentence, and I figured that Gallup would have asked, like, do you like spiders? And it would have been like 12% like spiders. You know, I, I haven't dug into all of Gallup's data, but do, per do, perhaps do they've published it. Real quick. Perhaps they've published it somewhere. This is, F, this is not an article that that's written. Fine. This is not an article that's written by Gallup. This is an article from the libertarianrepublic.com. And so. clowns. I, I know that a lot of people don't like clowns. So maybe I, I have a brilliant idea. We should put clowns in Congress. <laughs> that's right. I think they're already there. No, the, those are just jerks and a-holes that are currently there. And even with the 7% approval rating, nearly 90% of them will be back next year. And you can be back tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, online. In the meantime, freetalklive.com. No. 
after the USDA unveiled its updated roommate food pyramid earlier this week, Department of Agriculture spokesman Michael Lowry spoke to Onion reporters about just how many servings of someone else's food roommates should be consuming on a day-to-day -day basis. Under the new guidelines, roommates should eat at least four portions of someone else's grains per day including one to two cups of already opened cereal. Of course, this is all in addition to the eight to 16 swigs of milk and orange juice spaced out over a few days. Lowry emphasized that many aspects of the new roommate food pyramid are unchanged from the previous version, including a recommended daily intake of 24 ounces of lunch meat straight from the bag and five to seven weekly finger scoops of Erica's peanut butter. Remember to limit your intake of sugar and sweets from half open containers, especially if they're Jessica's, cause she'll definitely notice. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or... Go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, June 19th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.95 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,282 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $607. Antiwar.com reports Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko spoke with his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin overnight and followed it up with a formal ceasefire proposal. Poroshenko